You're listening to Talk Star Wars, a proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Check us out on the web at StarWarsCommonwealth.com and take your first steps into a larger world. Hello there, and welcome back to Talk Star Wars, episode 158. I'm Rob. And I'm Andy. Hello, Andy. Hello, Rob. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you, mate. Yourself? Good. Yes, can't complain, mate. Can't complain. Um, no Brad this week. Unfortunately, he is under the weather. And uh, yeah, just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. Yeah, let's do it. How's, how's your week been? It's been... Fine and dandy, thank you, mate. Good, yeah. good. Not too bad. I did a little bit of Star Wars stuff over the weekend. You did Star Wars stuff? What yeah. Star Wars stuff did with, you do? With Brad. We did this, I don't know if you heard me mention it, the um, the the gaming. Uh, the gaming thing, yeah. We did that yes. over the weekend. how did it go? It's pretty cool. It was good fun. I mean, at the very later, at the very least, you get to play a big game of Star Wars Legion, mm. which is good fun. I'm not sure, have you had any experience playing that one yet? No, I don't have enough friends. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's... Um, it's generally a skirmish is I think eight hundred points, and we were playing sixteen, so like basically twice yeah. the size of standard yeah. build. So we had you know we were kitted out with Han and Luke on one side, leading you know snipered commandos and um, like uh, speeder bikes and uh, not speeder bikes, uh, snow, air speeders and things like that. Nice. On the Empire side, you've got double ATSTs, uh, Darth Vader, Palpatine. Uh, speeder bikes, lots of them. Uh, Boba Fett, he was there. Cool man, it was, it was awesome. Like this. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, it's it's jolly good fun. It's it, like I say, it's it's a skirmish game, so it's kind of it's it's the rules are good and uh, kind of light enough that you can jump into it fairly quickly and mm-hmm. kind of you can do the basics and then you can build on the extra mechanics as much as you want. There's upgrade cards if you want to kind of customize it and all that jazz. But uh, you know the 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 core set that they sort of bundle stuff together is pretty pretty intensive it gives you enough to get you going nice. and give you a few games um and actually i've got a lot of i saw a lot of star wars stuff today at lunchtime i went off on a little excursion from work um mm-hmm. so there's this shop in uh in lambeth in london not it's not too far from my work called uh dark sphere and i've oh, okay. been there quite a lot for ta- it's tabletop shops like you know it sells you know warhammer and board games and all that stuff and it's got a lot of star wars things and i go there for um batman miniatures and uh well every time i've been in there the last couple of times they've said have you been up to our new shop in shepherd's bush yet and i've been saying no you know i haven't been able to get over there and check it out and they said oh you should go it's about three times the size of this one and this is a big shop so Mm. i'm sitting there thinking how big can this thing be (laughs) and uh turns out pretty big yeah (laughs) i went there at lunchtime today and it's ridiculous it's like a warehouse full of stuff in fact i'm just going to send you a picture for your benefit nice where is this shepherd's bush shepherd's Shepherd's bush so you literally Mm. you walk out of the uh train uh, the tube station Mm. there's a little shops shopping center called i think it's west 12 or w12 right yeah uh, it's just inside there um and nice. so you've got a picture coming to you which is a panoramic that i took because i had to take a panoramic because it wouldn't fit in otherwise <laughs> madness but uh if you're a uk oh, wow. based yeah if you're a uk based tabletop gamer Jeez. yeah it's massive isn't it that's 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 ridiculous <laughs> yeah, know, it's, it's insane but um yeah they had you know legion they had armada they had imperial assault they had x-wing both editions all sorts of fun stuff. They've got Batman, they've got, you know, Fallout, they've got Star Trek, they've got uh, Warhammer, and they've got enormous amounts of things. Do you know what? I think if I went here, I'd probably <laughs> save lots of money because by the time I come out, I'd be divorced. <laughs> so um, It is one of those shops where I, I find with those shops, wow. I either go in and buy loads of stuff or go in and buy nothing because I go, no, if I take one thing off the shelf, it's all it's on. You know, mm, it's... Yeah. it's it's like I say, there's so many tabletop systems that I play, which I probably shouldn't um, already. The idea of getting into another one or 
augmenting the stuff I've got is yeah. quite is quite troubling. That's, so that's I crazy. I can't even zoom into the back of the picture. I won't go that no, far. No, it took me about 10 minutes to just walk around the edge, not looking at anything. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's not even no. like, oh, that's big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wow. immense. Anyway, that works really well over radio, as I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to go out there and have a look, I think. Yeah, going back to what I was saying. So, yeah, the uh, the gaming show was really cool. Obviously, we went there for Fire When Ready, which is the uh, the YouTube series that Brad and his, and, uh, his dad, and I've turned up on there a couple of times, and Blake's turned up on there, and, mm. you know, it's a, good, it's a good old, you know, good fun time. We play Star Wars tabletop stuff, and, you know, Legion makes sense. And the big skirmish game, we, it took us about five and a half hours to play it through the whole thing because okay. each turn you know the first turn i think took the best part of an hour right and that was only six turns to get through the whole thing oh, okay. um, it was a convincing imperial victory because um palpatine managed to chain lightning luke into jerky <laughs> <laughs> and invader was just not really feeling any effects of anything and Han Solo was just kind of bedded in behind some terrain until an ATST just walked around the terrain and went, hello, and just, pla- nice. just emptied it, all, all his cannons into him. So, uh, yeah. I think there's something I might have to start having to look into, to be honest, because it's definitely up my street. Yeah, well, I can recommend the YouTube channel if that's the kind of thing you want to uh, <laughs> yeah. get into it. The Emotionally 14 YouTube channel has several videos of Star Wars Legion gameplay where you can, uh, and you can enjoy those nice. as uh, commentated upon by Brad. And, I'll, uh, and I'll have a look. And the other people at the table. Well, worth I know I like his Instagram post when they go up. Yeah. I know that much. I yeah. support him there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, as is customary, once we've done our little intro on Talk Star Wars, it's it's time for us to delve into the spoiler-free resistance roundup. Now, every week I say this, but it's still true. Every week, <laughs> I am so impressed at how Vesuvi manages to give us so much and tell us so little. Yeah, I know. I listen to this show every week, as you know. Yeah. I've never seen Resistance. No. I listen to this. I still have no clue what Resistance is about. Exactly. Because she, she gives yeah. us so much stuff. And yet, nothing. It, yeah. And then, yeah, it's so well done in terms of spoilers that I don't feel like I'm, you know, I'm missing out on the kind yeah. of the surprises and things like that. So this week... The Disappeared continues with the theme established on preceding episodes in which the First Order are slowly, steadily tightening their grip on the Colossus, imposing curfews, restricting communications, impeding travel, and in this episode, calling an end to races, which, as you can imagine, are vital to the station's morale. Captain Dozer isn't pleased, but Commander Pyre insists it's in the pursuit of security. On top of that blow, anyone who behaves defiantly towards the increasing regiment of stormtroopers mysteriously vanishes. When, Fred's of, when friends of Kaz and Tora are among the abducted, the two want to mount the search party, which clearly is inadvisable considering the milieu. And I suppose if I say anything else, it'll be too much. Although I think it's okay to let you know it ends with a cliffhanger. But I will add that we hear re-mentions of alcoholic beverages, cerulean sour paste, as well as jet juice. Cheers! Yeah, that's... Again, there's lots there. Mm. But I don't feel like I'm missing out on the on the big kind of reveals and the surprises. And let's say you can mention it, you can mention the cliffhanger. And you know, obviously, if I watch this episode, I'll probably be looking for it. But at the same time, it's at the end of the episode. I know this, so yeah, it's my own fault yeah. for looking. Really, <laughs> can't really argue with that. And then uh, Vesuvi wrote in again, as she is one to do, kindly to talk about last week's episode. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, bread bins, because I can't speak properly. In regards to us, that's me just editorializing, just to be clear for those listening. In regards to Australia Dave's message referencing Bo Katan Cruiser, the character is indeed still alive in canon. And I, for one, would love to see Katie Sackhoff reply, reprise that role, this time in the flesh. I've greatly admired her talent since Battlestar Galactica. Her casting hasn't been announced, obviously, because such a declaration would be a spoiler, but she would sp- fit in splendidly in the Mandalorian storyline. During the coverage of Phoebe's message, you brushed upon a couple of things I'd like to add to. Uh, firstly, when you joked about finding out what caused the character of DJ to have a stutter, I forget what we decided it was in the end. I think it was just a <laughs> shot to the head. Um, I believe I heard Benicio Del Toro address this in some interview or behind-the-scenes video. If memory serves, he imagined DJ to be such a hooligan that he would have been stunned with electroshock prods, similar to the kind Rhodes disabled Finn with, to the degree that it caused minor brain damage, which manifested itself as a vacillating stammer. That might not be canon, but it was his rationale as to using it as a character quirk. 
Secondly, during that discussion, you went on a very entertaining analysis of elements from The Last Jedi. I think it was Rob who mentioned having heard on another Commonwealth podcast that it was clarified in the novelization as to Luke's decision to help Ray before getting sidelined. I'm in agreement that it might have been expressed more clearly, although I found it to be clear enough personally, but I'm curious about the following. Luke, after dealing with Ray, reconnected himself to the Force. The first thing that happens when he does that is, Leia, even in her semi-comatose state, detects this reconnection. It was my impression that if Leia felt Luke, then Luke also felt Leia, perhaps even perceiving her incapacitated state of health. Shortly after that is when he finds Ray finger-fiddling with Kylo, which do... (laughs) Which derails, the, oh my, which derails the whole mood on both sides, I dare say. Incidentally, when I read this the first time and it was sent through, I kind of pictured it like when you're trying to get TV reception. Like, <laughs> they're kind of, they're, their fingers are out and they're just like, hang on, we got, do the index of, uh, up a bit. Like, move, move, the ring, move the ring finger to the side a touch. Like, just hang on, you're coming in a bit, you're coming in a bit more. left or my left. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, nautical left. Like, what? <laughs> My impression from the movie alone was that Luke's position softened to the point from his dealings with Ray that he decided to join her and help the resistance effort. Why else would he reconnect himself to the Force? Surely not just to use his Jedi abilities to a lethal degree. To me, that was a rather clear implication. So my question to you is, what did, what did you think was the reason Luke reconnected himself to the Force if not to accompany Ray and assist the resistance? Many thanks and praise for Suvi, Knight of the Commonwealth. P.S. I'm so glad Brad is enjoying Delilah S. Dawson's Phasma. I don't think he'll be disappointed with how it concludes. Well, I think uh, from speaking to him yesterday, Vesuvio, I think that that is on the cards very soon. So he'll probably have some thoughts on that by next week's episode, I would have thought, because the last time I spoke to him, he was very, very near the end. So what was the reason in our heads that Luke reconnected himself to the Force, if not to accompany Ray? Andy, how did you... I mean, you listen to the episodes. How did you kind of take that? Well, I always, I've always seen Ray, um, Luke. Sorry, in this this scenario, is what happened in the Last Jedi. Was Luke had already said to Ray, "I've seen this strength once before," and and all of the other lines we heard him say. He basically is denouncing the Jedi. He's he's had enough of that. He's he's. The Last Jedi, he's seen the error of his ways, he's done a lot wrong, and he kind of thinks, and I kind of get what he's saying, if I'm not there to do it, then there's no more Jedis, then nothing's going to happen. Yeah. And I think when he meets Rand, and starts to realise her power and starts to realise, I think he kind of goes, well, there's no getting away from it. It's going to go full circle, and unless I'm there to help guide and understand and mm-hmm. and – and that she's going to turn out whatever way and maybe use this and be consumed by the false. Cause I kind of yeah. see it like a drug in a way where okay. it'd be quite easy to fall to the dark side with that amount of power. Cause let's be honest, if you got given superpowers, the first thing you think about is how do I make money out of this? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it'd be easy for those not, not of just heart to, to quite easily fall down a rabbit hole. Yeah. For and sure. I think that's the point where he's stuck on that planet. He's, he's not coming off of yeah. there. There's, there's no way for him to move off of there. He, I do believe that he sees Leia mm-hmm. or feels Leia and feels her in her incapacitated state. And that's him yeah. reaching out to her. And that's why she says Luke, um, mm-hmm. because she, you know, he, he's calling out to her and going, come on woman, get back in the game. You know, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Yeah. I can't get there. You need to sort this out. Yeah. And, he reconnects with the force full well knowing that that's probably going to finish him off. Mm-hmm. But he knows that that's the way to put Ray on the path where Ray needs to go. Yeah. So it's like this once is he, point where, once he makes himself, once he dips his toe back in that water, his, his, his destiny is kind of, you know, yeah, his, he, he knows where he's going from then on. Yeah. But he sees it as I'm doing both of the, both of the things that I need to do here. I need yeah. to stop myself being part of this equation mm-hmm. because whatever I've ever done, I've got that legacy that is never going to leave me. I'm yeah. always going to have to go down that path of being Luke Skywalker and look at the mistakes I've made mm-hmm. and the right things I've done. Yeah. Give it over to this girl who is clearly more powerful than me, who is clearly more kind of heart and more just and more righteous because let's be honest, Luke has always been on that cusp of falling to the dark side. And mm. this was his ultimate sacrifice of going, this is the right thing to do. I've set her on the path. And that's why I don't ever in my head question the Ray is completely light side. There is, I, I don't think they're going to give her, I think for cynical reasons, I end up, I, I totally agree. I think that the, 
yeah, one of the things I've kind of um, bemoaned a little bit in the in the Disney era, because that's kind of the best way to describe it, is mm. the the it feels like there's less subtlety and there feels like there's less nuance to this stuff. Yeah. And I think that one of the side effects of that, one of the casualties of that, is that you're going to end up with characters that don't have any kind of moral ambiguity. They're going to be mm. all the way one way or the other. They're going to be kind mm. of, you know, this is why I, find, I sort of... I didn't quite get when The Last Jedi came out and everybody was talking about it being very subversive. On the face of it, it was, and it is, but at the same time, by the end, it's a binary good versus evil story. Yeah. And to me, that is kind of... It's a, it's almost like a sort of faux subversion. It's not really... Mm. It's not really subversive. It just didn't do what... You, what some, you know, it didn't go with the prevailing fan theories. Yeah, I think, I think you're right with the ambiguity thing. I think that's the biggest thing. Star Wars has always been, been very between the lines mm. with what's going on. The whole Luke storyline, they never really delve into the point that yeah. he's going dark side. They just imply that he's on the cusp of that. We yeah. see him lose control on a couple of occasions mm. um, through the want of revenge and hatred for his father and yeah. the, the atrocities that he's caused. Whereas I think Ray has nearly gone there a couple of times, but what happened in The Last Jedi yeah. completely put her on the path of righteousness. I think you you're know, right, yeah. There was that one moment where um, you know, Kylo held his hand out and said, join me, right at the end after the fight in the Praetorian Guard. Yeah. And there, I don't think there was ever a question in her. I think she was just literally looking at him like, I cannot believe you. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was a question in her head that, oh, maybe I will. I think it was more, no way. Yeah, <laughs> and, are you kidding me after all this? Yeah, and that's what Luke helped her fall down that path. Everything he did yeah. through that film, he, I think he made his point, mm-hmm. and I think Yoda kind of gave him that little kick up the backside to say, look, whatever you do when you know when he burned the tree he was like well just burn it yeah it doesn't matter the jedi will live on regardless of you know or the force will continue to live on yeah and you can make of it what you want to make of it and Mm -hmm. that's what he did he just pushed her on that path and he knew he was never coming back but he didn't need to and he didn't want to yeah and you know i think let's be honest he was an old man that had seen and done far too much in his life and probably thought this is the perfect time for me to now yeah Depart. Yeah, maybe. Because I mean, let's be honest, he's not gone either, is he? So. No, this is true. I mean, you know, if there's one franchise where I keep, I come back to it every time. But if there's one franchise where death is not the uh, absolute, you know, the last we'll ever see of a character at Star Wars. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I kind of I had to think about this question because obviously it's kind of well, I mean, for a start, it's aimed at me and Brad specifically. <laughs> but it's yeah, the, yeah. the sort of notion of well, if you didn't expect that, what did you expect? I think. And I think I did, I did understand that that was what had happened. Was that you know, I guess I never really put together that the, one of the reasons he was so upset with the fact that they were sort of connecting him through the Force was that he'd just, just this moment kind of resolved himself to, you know, that he was going to be part of the fight again. But I think they did build to that. You know, they saw you saw him kind of break with. Um, realizing that Han wasn't with Chewie. Mm. That was kind of where it all kind of, where it all kicked off. I think the sort of the chain of events that ended up with him deciding to get back into the fight in some form. But also I I think, um, realizing that Ray was trying to make herself better. Yeah. Whether he, whether he was going to help or not when he watches a kind of train without, I don't think she necessarily realizes he's there when she starts, you know, when she sort of consciously, chucks the staff away and picks the lightsaber up and starts sort of training with it. I think maybe that's the sort of indicator to him that she realizes that she's rough in terms of um, ability and that she's trying to improve Mm. her, you know, she's trying to improve and he sort of realizes, Oh, you know, maybe I was a bit, yeah, maybe it's a a sort of a, a bit of a wake up call to him that he's been, he's judged quite hastily and he's not really given her a chance to, Get yeah, better. see, I see it as kind of that, but also a kind of a bit of, um, well, she's going to do it. I might as well help. Yeah, I can see, you, I can see what you mean. You know, yeah. that, there's that, like, she's on my island. She won't go. She's going to stay here until I join in. Yeah. And she's going to do it regardless of my help. And mm-hmm. I think he just kind of, I'll have to do this yeah. and reluctantly does. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, but yeah, I think it was, uh, that, that's kind of how I land on it. It's, it's not quite that it's, 
that I didn't pick up on it at all. It's just I hadn't quite put that together that it was, you know, that was the moment where he'd made his mind up or just mm. just before that was when he'd made his mind up that it was time to to come back. But I can see how, you know, the especially the layer thing makes him realize what he's mm. left behind and the people he's kind of left behind and that he's kind of probably feels quite responsible for that because, you know, one of the things we talked about a lot last week was how what didn't quite gel with me was how he'd been able to just walk away mm. because he was always one of those people who was very sort of idealistic and wanted to make things better and didn't want, and, you know, he threw himself into the, into the fray on a new hope. As soon as the, the last, you know, the instant everything keeping him tied to Tatooine had gone, suddenly he's straight in there. I want to, you know, I want to go with you. Yeah. And it's within seconds of, you know, he doesn't even have to think about it after that point. Cause he's always wanted to go and it's always, he's always stayed there out of feelings of sort of loyalty. And mm. then that's it. You know, after that, he's like, well, there's nothing stopping me now. I want to get involved. Yeah. I, I, I just think it, it runs a bit deeper with him. I think you look at what Luke's been through, you know, he, he mm. finds out his, you know, his aunt and uncle has looked after him. They yeah. get disintegrated. Yes. Um, and then he finds out his father is this, um, space Nazi mm-hmm. and controlling, you know, yeah. just c- controlling and conquering and dividing. Um, and there's a couple of times we see it when he looks at the robotic hand mm-hmm. and he's, you know, he's questioning his, 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 his actions and his abilities and his, and his choices. And I think after what happens with Kylo, and I honestly believe out of those stories we hear about it, I, I think Kylo wants more, the no, believable closer to the one truth. there, yeah. And I, think, the I don't think Kylo's got anything to hide and lie about. Where no. I think Luke's a bit jaded on that subject. He's like, you know, I was trying to do the right thing, mm-hmm. and I had this moment of, oh my god, this this boy is going to turn into my father. Yeah, and I'm going to kill him. And this is the only way. And I think he gets to that point of Luke's literally to that point. I, there is nothing I can do to stop this circle yeah. from continuing. To, to, to go on and and I, and I think that's that gets to that point where this is what I mean with this film is it's just at that point he's given up with the force because of what keeps happening he's just I cannot keep seeing these atrocities yeah and then he sees Ray and he thinks it's happening again but I'm gonna have to and then this is the point where he goes right I'm just gonna do what I'm doing and yeah. I'm gonna go now yeah because I've had enough yeah so. I, I can sort of I, I sort of get I, I do get what you mean you know there's mm. it's it's he's been through a lot you know nobody can argue of the characters in the entire saga he's probably had to shoulder the most what's the Mm. word he's had to shoulder the most kind of um responsibility yeah and he you know he probably feels a lot of that responsibility probably unnecessarily because he hasn't done anything wrong you know he's Mm. it's just by virtue of who his dad is that he has to sort of shoulder this burden Mm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that would be my answer for Suvi. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Um, our next message comes from Matt Gilbert, who has taken the time to write in twice, in fact. So this is the first of those. And, uh, the first one is about last week's episode. I think the other one is as well, although maybe not so much. Uh, but Matt writes, hello team. Loving your work as always, especially when the hurricane of chaos, otherwise known as Carlos, appears from time to time. (laughs) Get that dump button ready. And sorry, Brad, we're talking The Last Jedi once again. This email is in response to Phoebe's question about why some fans just don't like The Last Jedi. The easiest way I can explain my feelings about it is it's just not to my palate. I really am not a fan of anything bitter, using the word as a taste metaphor only and not in a derogatory way. So if I'm offered something that's not to my palate, I won't necessarily enjoy it. There were some elements I enjoyed from the movie, of course, but overall it just wasn't for me. Even the post-Holdo maneuver shot of the Cleave destroyers and supremacy did not stir me. I really enjoyed the use of silence for that moment, but seeing that all of the destroyers were destroyed evenly down the middle frustrated me uh, immediately. I blame myself for listening to too many physics podcasts and thinking, well, this is nonsense. Shouldn't they be all over the place in their destruction? One other thing is the use of red in the movie. From the promo material to the soil outside of the base to the throne room, I cannot recall when a Star Wars movie used a strong color preference. This could just be me. Finally, I cannot recall if the movie had someone's arm being severed or the I have a bad feeling about this line. Happy to be proven wrong, though. Again, though, Wizards in Space. And whilst writing this rather lengthy email, I had another epiphany. Rogue One hit me in such a huge and monumental way that I did not get from even The Force Awakens. That's the movie that made me feel like a kid again, and I was ready to go back and watch it again immediately. 
It's also a movie that I will only watch start to end and not just skip to the Battle of Scarif like I'd be so tempted to do. I've watched The Last Jedi twice. It's set better a second time, but in the same stroke, movies that require multiple times for enjoyment also irk me quite a bit. I then begin to wonder if it's Stockholm Syndrome or if it does sit better in general. (laughs) I'm always happy to change my opinion if I end up enjoying it one day. You just never know. But as we always reiterate on the show, we're always happy to see others enjoy something we may not have. I never want to yuck someone else's yum. Unless it's chocolate with orange <laughs> flavour in it. Nasty. Matt hey. from Australia. Well, first of all, Matt, I can't I can't agree with the chocolate orange um that, that's condemnation. From... That is a fine flavour combination in my estimation. Thank but, you. Uh, this was all on our um on Retro Inc, mate. This was yeah. whole chocolate orange argument debacle. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's been is, going on there because it's like we he knew get, you were coming. Adam wanted to get in room one oh one and wow. it's just disgusting. Disgusting. Oh, Didn't go in, don't worry. No, well that's um, uh I couldn't have swung with that one personally. That's uh, mm. that's not right. Um, but in terms, so let's go back and break it down a little bit. Um, so the the hold on maneuver thing. I mean, I obviously I did this to. It feels like I did this to death <laughs> at the time. We had a lot of back and forth on this. A lot of uh, listener questions about you know my thoughts and and yeah. You know, it was a first for me because it was the first time I'd got into a, an argument via email where the responses were a week apart. <laughs> it was peculiar to me that I'd always yeah. get told, you know, Mark would email me and say, um, we got another email from Derek or something like that. And I was always happy to hear from Derek, but it was just a weird sensation to to be kind of having that debate in yeah. that format. It's very peculiar to me. You know, I'm used to talking to people live and, you know, in the moment and actually reacting to what they're saying as they're saying it. So it was very, it was a, it was a it was an experience, but um, the holder maneuver, the maneuver itself irks me a little bit. The silence I thought was weird but excellent. Yeah. The the fact that all the other ships broke never quite gelled for me. It was I never quite understood how that was a thing. Anyway. Right. Um. But yeah, it was yeah. I, I I sort of understand where Matt's coming from on that one because I sort of found it a bit the whole maneuver a bit tidy, bit of a, mm. a bit of a Deus Ex Big Mac in the through space. You know, yeah. one ship that's able to just take out the entire enemy fleet. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, there is a there's a bit a of that. It. it is. I mean, I, I'm I love the Last Jedi because it's a Star Wars movie. Um, there is problems with it, but let's be honest, there's problems with all of them. I think the biggest issue mm. a lot of people probably have with The Last Jedi, if you're going to really put it down to just a simple change that, that could have changed a lot of opinions, yeah, I just think it's the way it's shot. It's a very different Star Wars movie. Yeah. Um, the, the Matt's right there with the colour palette. I mean, I, I love the colour palette in that movie. It's beautiful, but it doesn't sit in the same sort of style as the rest of the other the Star Wars films. And that's why mm-hmm. Rogue One works so well, because yes. it feels like Star Wars. From the moment you see the first ship, the first even the first planet on Edo, it feels like Star Wars, even though it's a, yeah. an eco, you know, like a, a system we've not seen before, like a planet style we've not seen before, and they're kind of a damp, wet, um, you know, Vista countryside sort of setting instead of deserts and and snow planets. It yeah. still feels like Star Wars somehow, mm-hmm. and I just think the Last Jedi feels very different. Yeah, um, and not in a bad way. I love it. It's got its problems. I'm mm-hmm. over Carrie Poppins. I don't mind that scene. I weirded me out when the first time I saw it, but yeah. I've, I've got to grips with it. It's just got a couple of problems, but what film hasn't? And well, quite yeah. You know, I understand if you don't like it because it is a very different beast. And yeah. me and you both have exactly the same opinion on this film, Rob, that mm-hmm. the the bits of story that we wanted to see and they said there wasn't the time and then, but we can have Luke Milk in a Thala Siren. Yeah. Now, Milk in the Thala Siren isn't the problem there. No. If that had been in the film with the questions answered that I wanted answered. Fine. It would have been fine. You yeah. know, people can't sit there and go, well, that's ridiculous because I remember outside Jabba's Palace, the big frog thing eating a a little rat thing. You get all these silly little yeah. what nuances about? in Star Wars that, that don't matter. And that's what mm. Mil- Luke Milk and the Thala Siren is. And yeah. it's what even the first, you know, not new remastered, but you walk into Jabba's palace and you've got the band playing. Yeah. 
that's they're all weird little things that don't need to be in there. I know you don't like Salacious Crumb, but it's that same style of oh, monster yeah. moment that yeah, ex- doesn't totally. He fits like and in the same way, like the Thalassiren thing it, in in and of itself, it fits. The yeah. problem is that it it's it's at the expense of other things that I would have preferred to have that they said that they said they didn't have time for. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and that's it's not quite, you didn't have time for it. Well, you had time for him fishing. Yeah. You had exactly. a scene with, with Luke fishing, but you couldn't yeah. tell me who Snoke was. And that's where that argument falls down for yeah. this film. Yeah. But as a side, I mean, it's, I get it. If you don't like it, I don't like attack of the clones and I really don't like it. It's, yeah. it's still not in my worst films of all time, but as a star Wars film sits, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's too much exposition. I hate the whole Dex thing. I hate, you know, there's, it's just a film that does not sit right for me. Yeah. But I don't mind people like it. I kind of raise an eyebrow and go, you're one of them. Okay. But, <laughs> but there's, there's a time and a place for all of it. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Like you've always said, it's, it's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But I just hope that people don't poo poo nine at the expense of The Last Jedi, because if that was the case, I wouldn't w- have watched Revenge of the Sith, which is one of the best Star Wars films. Oh, yeah, totally. It's a so, great, great movie. You know, I get the parts you don't like. The Holdo maneuver is weird, because let's be honest, we could have just done that to the Death Star. Totally. Instead of trying this is to the fire thing, a little, One, little thing down a meter hole. You can have, and, if you can have droids hook up yeah. to a ship and do stuff with it, you can have yeah. it fly through, you know, like droids have got personalities, but they're not senti- they're not sentient beings with souls yeah they're not going, hang on i'm not doing this yeah exactly <laughs> i mean to the best of my knowledge there's no like unions in the droid world you <laughs> know what i mean droid like, union. yeah they're not going on strike or anything although solo i suppose there's a bit of that but not much it's not in the yeah, same way is it that's a whole lot conversation for another time there because i'm really not a fan <laughs> of l3 um, ah, okay. but yeah it's just it's just one of those the whole day maneuver is probably the biggest part in which is ironic because i think it's also one of the best parts of that like i love the cinematography of that scene i yeah. don't care about splitting down the middle why because like he said wizards in space yeah, yeah. we're talking about a film where we've seen bombs being dropped mm-hmm. in in a vacuum yeah um, we're, we're seeing yeah. you know false lightning we're seeing um laser swords it's you you've got to suspend disbelief for one you've got to su- suspend it for all you got to that. do that and a little bit yeah and way. that's where i've done that with the whole carry poppy things because I, I don't think it's actually what happens in that scene that i don't like it's just how it's shot okay and that's what i've got my head around i don't like the way she looks i don't like the way she moves her hand right. i don't like the way she glides through space yeah however if it was shot in a different way i'd probably enjoy that scene a lot more mm. yeah mate, quite possibly i mean maybe she didn't have to do anything maybe her hand could have just gone out and yeah. she could have just floated back in it didn't have to be all whimsical and mary poppins-esque and yeah there are a lot of things like that where you think well maybe that would have made the difference between mm. thinking it was fine and not thinking it was fine like little, little things like that could go either way i mean me personally i say you know i've done this quite thoroughly but i'm not the biggest fan of Carrie Poppins. I think it looks a bit daft and, you know, and I, and I don't have a, you know, again, it, it fits fine in the star Wars thing and it doesn't out. It's not out of step with mm. Leia's character because you do think, you know, that she's probably been shown a little bit of force stuff by Luke. They probably, at some point they probably explored the possibility that she might be a Jedi. Well, we, we know she is. We've, we've had the conversation between Obi-Wan and, and Yoda. There is yeah. another. There is another, exactly, like, yeah. There so is there's, another Skywalker. She's, there. she's got the potential to yeah. to kind of to pick it up at the very least. So, you know, that makes perfect sense. But it's, it's again, it's just the, the way it's done. It just doesn't quite work. And, and that's my point about this film. Yeah. It's not the content, it's the way it's shot. It's the and that's the only, yeah, it's the only thing I see about this movie that people have got a problem with. Mm. Um, if you'd have changed a lot of things about it that are minuscule directing choices, yeah. then I think it would have changed it. Not storyline, mm-hmm. none of that, because the storyline is sound. Yeah. It is sound. It's, it's, and I know Donald Glover come out recently, didn't he? And said that Kylo is actually a better villain than Darth Vader. And I think what he's getting at is more complex. Yeah. Because yeah, Darth totally. is bad. Darth Darth is bad bad. in in Star Wars, in Empire, and in Return of the Jedi. Darth bad. Darth bad. There isn't a backstory. We don't get the backstory per se. Uh, Darth well bad. Yeah, exactly. He's just this big scary dude that walks on screen, does some stuff. Yep. 
and goes home mm. and everyone goes, oh, it's scary. Well, we've got this complex story with one of the best actors of this generation. Yeah. Acting his face and his heart off during The Last Jedi. Literally, I think there was a bit where his face just dropped clean off. Yeah, well, I, I said in, in our last podcast, he literally acts with his face in that whole scene where he's going towards the um, the ship with Lara on. Yeah. And his twitch, it's all in his face. He doesn't yeah, say a it word. it has to be because he's all, and, you know, he's only being shot from the waist up, right? So it yeah, makes sense that you need his, you can't have body cockpit. language so easily. Yeah, he's sitting in a cockpit. Yeah. It's just his face and he's got to communicate in that scene. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kill my mum here and the internal torment that is yeah. creating. And he does it. And yeah. he's a complex villain that's going down a path that, you know, he's, the, he's gone from the emo teen to the, um, the, the gathered thought and direction of a, of a psychopath that's yeah. suddenly going, now I know what I want to do and who I am. Yeah. And that's a great story. It's not, it's not the story, man. It's the way it's shot. That's yeah. what I really think that with The Last Jedi. Yeah, it's just the execution is just not yeah. quite right, you know. I mean, let's be honest. When you first come out of that cinema, apart from the big Carrie Poppins and all those moments, what was the thing you were thinking about? And I know if it was anything like me, it was, well, that was different. Yeah, and I in mean, my head, that was the it. the different was the style. It was 20 minutes with me and my mate Omer stood in the, in the foyer of the cinema we went to going, I don't know if I like that. Did I? Could yeah. I? Like... Is it what? 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 What happened there? I don't understand. Well, I saw you there, and I didn't even. Uh, no offense, didn't want to come over and speak to you because I was sitting in my car doing the same, still trying to get my thoughts together. Of, Did I enjoy it? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, and it, it was one of them. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's it's a weird one. It's very peculiar. Uh, it's very strange to me that it's. Mm. And on the note of multiple watches, yes. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. I understand if it irks some people, but yeah. you know, I, I've there's many a film where I've watched it once and I didn't like that, and I've watched it a year later and I've gone, actually, that was really good. Mm. And I think sometimes it's your frame of mind. You, you know, we went into the Force Awakens and maybe all hold it dearer because we were waiting since what 2003. Uh, 05 for, for real oh, so 2005 yeah for a Star Wars movie that we never thought we'd really get yeah and then suddenly we've got this Star Wars film and then when we started seeing things we're like no this isn't just a Star Wars movie this mm-hmm. is actually a Star Wars movie this yeah, isn't it feels really, right you know I, as much as I love the prequels um, as a whole there is some bigger issues with it that I think yeah I can take it or leave it it mm-hmm. wouldn't bother me but this was like this is actually another Star Wars movie and we had that excitement of course after Rogue One and Force Awakens yeah. let's be honest how hard is that to follow up yeah it's tricky <laughs> because yeah. it is tricky you know it's, it's like when a band released their, their first album it's the best album they're, they're gonna do yeah it's only downhill from there and yeah not saying Star Wars is downhill but it's hard to match and that excitement level as well has gone at that point Mm -hmm. so people are being overly critical we went in and no matter what we would have loved the force awakens if it had just been luke standing there waving a lightsaber about for an hour and a half totally and we would have gone oh my god this is amazing because we've seen mark hamill on screen again and we come out of the force awakens absolutely mind blown Mm. and then you've got to follow it up yeah yeah indeed it is a tough sell yeah i mean you've got to like you say you've got to elevate you've got to elevate the the story you've got to progress it but you also you've got to do it in a way that's not just a lift of empire because at that point they've already started having the criticism that it's Mm. very similar to force awake uh to new hope sorry and i understand that you know and i i sympathize with some of it um but in in terms of see my take on it is with certain films there's something to be said for watching it once and then watching it again, knowing everything you know. So like with, you know, when I went to see Rogue One, there were a couple of things that kind of struck me, even Rogue One, which, you know, doesn't have any kind of grander storyline implications apart from mm-hmm. slightly reframing New Hope. But I had to go back and watch it a second time because the fact that Tarkin was in it had surprised me, even though it made perfect sense. And the fact that it wasn't John Williams' music had surprised me and it had stuck out in my mind as that was odd. Mm. So even though there weren't any story things, I still had to go back and watch it again just to not have those things kind of jarring on me this time round. And what I ended up finding was 
I thought the talking stuff was fantastic anyway, but I thought it was especially good after having seen it a second time. Mm. And I thought the music worked really well. But those were things I don't think I would have gone away thinking if I'd just stuck with that first viewing. So to say, and especially, mm. and if you add that, if you add on to that, the, the story element where it is something like the saga stuff, especially Last Jedi, because, you know, as we say, it's the, one of the plot points was write subvert expectations on a big piece of paper and try and work it in every chance you get. Mm. And, you know, there was a lot of that and that takes time to process and it takes, a lot of, you know, it takes either reflection or multiple viewings. Because some people can do that. You know, I've, I've only seen Last Jedi, I think, three times at a push. Uh. I mean, twice at the cinema, maybe once on home, some, maybe twice. But I can still, you know, I've, I've taken the time instead and reflected on it and thought about it and talked about it on the, on the show uh. and, to, you know, talked about it, engaged with our community and discussed it at length so i kind of feel like that's done that job that another viewing would do well i've seen it probably now i think about between 20 25 times Crikey. something like that because you know i've got it it yeah. goes on it's yeah, one of those enough. i put it on i'm editing our podcast i'm doing stuff for the website mm-hmm. and it's just on in the background and it is <laughs> a non-offensive film and that's why i don't get the hate yeah i'd get the hate if it was you know, it, it started, rolled credits and, uh, you know, rolled the scroll and it was completely unrelated to the rest of the saga or yeah. they walked in and literally killed off Ray in the first five minutes and <laughs> Kylo become a good guy and yeah. and Luke Luke was an old hermit that gets killed off. You know, all of this crazy storylines they could have done. Yeah. I get it if people turn around and went, what the hell, man? Why, yeah. <laughs> what, what have I just watched? What we got was a continuation of the Star Wars saga in yeah. a way that makes perfect sense. Mm. Again, just the execution. Mm. That is all it comes down to. And if people can't see past that and just look at the, the story, then that's their own problem. I, I honestly believe. I just think, you know, you've got this beautiful rich world that has been created over 40 years mm-hmm. that we all love and adore. Yeah. How can you be so heinous and against it when just one little thing doesn't go your way? out of this plethora of yeah. storytelling that you've got so much to go through. Oh, I didn't like this one movie, so I'm never going to see it again. I, I get what you mean. I mean, I, I don't want to <laughs> kind of, you know, um, pour too much onto one, you know, onto people who didn't like the movie because ultimately it's not to everyone's taste. And clearly <laughs> the reaction fine. has, yeah, the reaction has, has made that clear, if nothing else, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's... I think I think you're right. I think you you're talking about a kind of a level up from just not enjoying it and not being for you. Yeah. There's a level of like almost kind of reactionariness to it. Yeah. You know, like well, forget that then, you know. Um and that's again, you know, fair enough if that's how I you want to I had a Starbucks earlier. I didn't like it as much as I usually like my Starbucks. So I'm never drinking in there again. I mean, I, th- I would be, you know, I would sympathise, to be honest, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no one messes with my coffee, mate. It's just not on. <laughs> um, so, Matt, there you go. So, it seems like you have some, you know, you have some kindred spirits in some of that. So, you know, take some comfort in that, at least. Apart from the chocolate orange thing, just, you know, um, it's not happening. <laughs> uh, but then he, he, he wasn't content to write in it once, Andy. He wrote in again. Blimey. I know, the prolific this week. Must be really quiet in Australia. Apparently, yeah. Um, so Matt writes, Hello team. Just thought of another email to send through before I keep forgetting to. This may well only affect me, but the music to all of the Disney era Star Wars music, okay, uh, movies I think he means there, doesn't seem to stick with me as profoundly as episodes one to six. Do you guys feel the same way at all? I'd love to hear from you guys and the listeners. If I have to think about the current generation of music, I have to really focus on it, I find. Perhaps we need more Star Wars games with current scores laced through them. Or perhaps we just need more Star Wars games full stop. Definitely not saying that the music is bad by any any degree, however. All the best and take care, Matt. What do you make of that one? Is the music for the new oh, ones? Oh, man, he's getting old. Leave him alone. The, you know, I was thinking that. I was, yeah, I, was sitting like... there, I was sitting there thinking when I saw this question. I was sitting there thinking, well, on the one hand, you know, it's like we've had decades of kind of repetition we've watched the movie you know we've watched the original trilogy at this point multiple times over we have had as matt kind of alludes to things even something like the 
replay, having to replay the same level on Super Return of the Jedi over and over and over again mm. will put the, you know, put the uh, Emperor's theme in your head because you yeah. keep hearing it because you keep failing that level because you're rabbit, yeah. Rob. I get it. To be honest with you, I kind of agree to a, uh, to a degree. Yeah. Um, you, you look at um, the prequels, you've got obviously the Jewel of Fates. I can never remember the song. Think about the, the, the lover song, Anakin and Padme. I can never remember. Across the Stars or something, what's it called? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. Um, you've got that. They stand out as tracks, and there isn't really anything on the new Disney era films mm-hmm. that stands out apart from the um, Rogue One theme for me, yeah. actually. I really enjoyed it because it was different. I know it's Chichino, and it kind of throws you for a loop that it's not John Williams and it's different Star Wars, but mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Chichino anyway from when he did Lost. Um, I love the soundtrack to that. Yeah. And – I look at the new Disney era films. What he's doing is what he did with the force awakens is very similar to what JJ did with the force awakens. Mm -hmm. They used a lot of beats and a lot of reminiscing and a lot of nostalgia to elevate this film. And when it comes to the last Jedi, I think it was just more of the same. Yeah. There wasn't, and I'm looking at, this is where he turned around and said, yeah, I'm going to do nine. It will be my last film. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to be in for something very special with nine. And I mean, obviously yeah. I'd be surprised if you didn't win the Academy Award next year. I think it. it's entirely possible that might happen. Yeah. And I hope so. I mean, it, it, obviously it just depends on whether or not someone makes a better soundtrack for a film that year, because that could always happen. I know it doesn't take anything away, thing away from John Williams, but if just somebody makes a better soundtrack that year, then yeah, well, what a shame, but I just think he's going to go into nine. There will be a lot of the um, rhyming stanza of Star Wars. I mm-hmm. think he's going to use a lot of the beats and a lot of Luke and Laz theme, um, you know, sorry, the maybe binary suns at sunset at some point. He'll yeah. use a lot of those beats in, in new compositions to give the nostalgia and feel. But mm-hmm. what I'm really hoping is, is that he brings out that standout track yeah. that, you know, does the Jewel of Fates thing, that when mm-hmm. somebody hits those first two bars of it, it rises that feeling and that emotion inside you that a lot of Star Wars music does. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's the you know Binary Sunset and Jewel of the Fates are two of them. I hear the notes, the first couple of notes of those, and I get goosebumps. Yeah. And it just brings me back to a simpler time when things were great and I'm sitting there in front of the TV with my bowl of cereal and my snacks on a Saturday morning watching Star Wars. And yeah. that's what I, I want to feel. And I hope that's what we get from Nine. And I hope this will be his magnum opus and he goes out with a bang. Yeah, I hope so too. Because to be honest, one of the sort of – what I was kind of build, like alluding to was I was, you know, running through sitting there thinking, is it kind of, is the, is it the familiarity has kind of just kind of put these themes in our heads just organically. And we just, mm. you know, we haven't had that with the Disney. I think there is a bit of that to it, but I think we also, have had 40 years. <laughs> yeah. And I, but I think also, and not to put too fine a point on it, but I think he's like you said, he's an old man. Maybe he's just, not doing his best work. Maybe he thinks it's hilarious. He just sits Maybe. there and goes, I'm getting paid millions for this. Yeah. All I've got to do is rearrange He's some done, from notes. You know, and this again, like Matt said, it's not to say that he hasn't done good work in the Disney era, mm. but it may be a man in his, what is he in his nineties? Yeah. If not nearly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe he's not doing Maybe he's not at the peak of his, creativity like he's obviously very he's still very sharp but at the same time he's been doing it for 50 plus years yeah it's not unfair to say that he's probably he's He's 87 87 thank you so he's 20 20 plus years past the age that most people retire (laughs) yeah yeah he's not i'm not you know on reflection i'm not expecting him to do his best work why would i you no, know, and he's not to say, like I say again, he's not to say that he's finding it in by any means or that he's doing bad work. My thing with Force Awakens and Last Jedi, to be honest, is there's one track that stands out for me, uh, a second one in The Last Jedi, actually. Uh, the, the March of the Resistance is fantastic. And the, um, the, the piece that was in the trailer for episode eight, the sort of, yeah. that's really cool. I don't know, I can't remember the name of it. 
but it's really, really good. And I heard it today for reasons I can't quite remember. Oh, I watched that Topher Grace cut together thing of the ten, oh, yeah, of the the ten, ten films yeah. into five uh, five minutes. And uh, it was in that. So I was just like, oh, yeah, that's a good piece. Nice. But, yeah, let's say, in, you know, he's a man in his late 80s, as you thankfully uh, found for me. Um, he's a man in his late 80s. It, it's kind of, it, that's kind of okay. <laughs> I know quite a few people in their late 80s, and most of them can't even get out of a chair. Well, quite, so, you know, he's, you he's know, still He's going full thing. day's work using yeah. all of his faculties to compose yes. some of the greatest music the film has ever heard. So give yes. a guy, you know, not in a horrible way, give a guy a bit of, bit of, bit of a break, you know. Him, I mean, he probably slightly. needs a nap every half an hour while he's doing this. Maybe, and, yeah. I think I look at it that he's obviously, you know, when they all sat down and spoke about this, him and Disney, I know he said, yes, he'll do it, but it was probably a proviso with them of, it depends on my health. Yeah. And when he started doing The Force Awakens. So what we're talking now, seven years probably production between all of these films? Maybe a bit more? Eight yeah, years? Yeah, I guess so. Well, I mean, yeah. they announced the, the Disney buy, I think, in 2013. 2013, so, so 19 now, so six years. Six, six, years, years. six years production for the whole trilogy, yeah. Right, so John Williams has probably been working on this for around five to six years. So that doesn't mean that he does one soundtrack and stops. He's got all of these ideas. We, you know it as a creative. If you start working on one project and you start thinking about seven other ones, yeah. and, you know, when he's doing The Force Awakens, he's probably already planning for eight and nine. He's already getting pieces that he goes, I like this, I like that, I'll use that if that doesn't work here. I'll, you know, and he's got this all in his little sound bank in his head and he's writing yeah. it all out. And he's probably been composing something for Star Wars that is quite grand from day one here yeah. to use in the right place. And that doesn't, you know, it might not be, but I, I can see him pulling out of the bag something that's really big for Nine because he knows, Disney knows that they have got to get this right for Star Wars to end because yeah. we've seen it with Mass Effect a beloved series that did a couple of episodes and people loved it and then they finished on a complete downer and look what it done for the rest of the series yeah you know I'm not saying it's at the same level of you know grandeur as Star Wars because it's not it's, mm. it's a video game that's still loved but nowhere yeah. near as big but can you imagine that scale with Star Wars where if nine they just drop the ball music wise cinematography acting, directing, it will, it will kill the franchise. And, and yeah. I'm not, not, not suggesting it's going to happen. Because, yeah. No, I'm not suggesting it's going to happen at no. all, but I'm saying that that they know the stakes at play here and yes. they are going to pull out all the stops. Of course, yeah, absolutely. They've it's... just built a theme park. Yeah, exactly. They don't build yeah. a theme park for something and then think in four years' time we're just going to give up on it. They have got no. plans for Star Wars for the next, who knows, yeah, at least at least two decades. I'd I'm say. sure. That, I'm sure they've got is, at the very know, least a ten year plan. Exactly. You know, for, yeah. you know, like you say, for you know, if you think they've got Ryan's trilogy, they've got Benny Off and Vice doing. The rumor is at least two films, two, maybe a two, trilogy. Three films, yeah. yeah. Uh, you got the Mandalorian. You've got the Cassian series. You know, by the sounds of it, you've got 370 rumored, other TV projects. Um, rumoured Obi-Wan. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's been rumoured for however and until... TV series, though, isn't it, now they're rumouring Obi-Wan. Yeah. Um, but, until, until we get confirmation from the Star Wars Twitter or something if it, something similar, then I'm going to take it as rumour and nothing else. Of that's, course, of course, you know. mate. I mean, I, I think it's hilarious every time I hear it. <laughs> mate, it's, so, it's so funny. It's like, and everybody's kind of just so adamant that every time it's like, oh, it's you know, it's coming, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, no. Well, no, somebody no. posted it in Tumbling Sabre the other day and I brought yes. up and I was like, yeah, and, and the next thing we hear is uh, Salacious Crumb. Show. Yes, and Ugh. yeah, Can you it's, imagine? it's you just hear everything now, don't you? And I, I think they've got a plan for Star Wars for the next, like you say, at least ten years. Because I mean, three films, well, six films there, probably potentially five to six films at least. I mean, even if you're talking two years apart, yeah. I mean, it might be alternating in one year. I mean, there's still five to six years of, of film. Yeah. already there plus whoever knows what else they, they've got going on um, the TV shows depends I mean I'm assuming they're going to be Lucasfilm produced on Disney Plus I would Plus. think so yeah. so that would mean that like the Marvel um, series being picked up by Marvel Studios for Netflix uh, not Netflix for the Disney Plus you know Loki and that they're actually being produced produced by Marvel Studios as opposed to somebody else yeah. outsourcing it so they're more interconnected with the MCU, they're in fact in line with the MCU, mm. and that's what I'll see. They'll, I, I've got a feeling they're going to do with this Disney Plus with Star Wars, 
is because it'd be Lucasfilm, it'd have the same sort of production and shine to it as the movies. And there is definitely a potential, I think, for crossovers. And that's what they're looking at. I've got a feeling that if they do Obi-Wan, that is going to sit in exactly the same timeline as Solo. Yes, so So what's so. to say, that we've seen a lot of Ray Park in the gym lately. What's to say this isn't post preparation for when we do this, we are going to have Obi-Wan and Darth Maul. Maybe that he yeah. will have he will have that whole crime syndicate that is mentioned at the end yes. of Solo that everyone thinks is going to fall away actually gets introduced into the TV show. Amelia Clark turns up because she's a TV actress anyway, and we get Ewan McGregor on screen for you know even if it's an eight eight episode series run that explains that side of it, and we have the whole you know we we can use the Darth Maul fighting. Kenobi yeah. on this planet and we've all wanted to see that and that could potentially happen that we saw in cartoon we could see it in live action it doesn't yeah. mean that that can't cross over at some point no for sure yeah you I know, mean that could be, be you know it could, dovetail, yeah, it could dovetail from the end of the you know the series could end with him finding Ezra or something yeah exactly and that could all join together and because you can do that in mixed universe that will start to answer the questions people want answered that, that weren't with yeah with solo and this this whole streaming service could bring all of that together because once they're in contract they can just say to them can you do this can you do that you're Mm -hmm. you're working for star wars and this is the series we're doing you need to be in that because this is part of that story and i'm sure let's be honest if you was in star wars and somebody asked you to do something else in star wars you're gonna go yeah all right yeah i would have thought so i'd be very surprised if anybody's going no you know what i feel like i said everything i needed to say with the dexter's dinosaur scene in the first, <laughs> yeah, that get you. But yeah, uh, yeah I, Matt, to answer your question, I think I, I kind of understand. I totally understand where you're coming from. You know, there there is a certain whether that's a mix of maybe it's maybe whether it's down to familiarity, whether it's down to like I say, and an, a, a man who is doing it, doing this to a high standard, far longer than he has any right to. Or whether it's a combination of all these things. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. Didn't absolutely I? fine. That's um, absolutely fine. Yeah. You know, ultimately we've kind of gone a bit conveyex since the change of leadership, um, <laughs> which is coming up was, in a year. It now. was so regimented before. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but there, Matt. There you go. So, but listeners, what do you think? You know, do, do the uh, new songs resonate for you? What's your favorite? What's your kind of pick of the uh, of the theme song bunch? You know, was, mm. is March the Resistance your thing or is that the other ones that I've forgotten the names of? Um, email us, talkstarwarsinfo at gmail.com, podcast at emotionally14.com. Any of those jazz, um, any of those things. Our next email comes from a name you might recognize, Andy. So, I, do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to just turn around and go, nope. <laughs> no, that oh, that is. So, it reads, I'm going to save it for save the reveal. It reads, Hi, gents. Let me start by saying how much I appreciated Brad's comments last week about Bilbo Baggins in The Hobbit compared to the Bilbo we meet in Fellowship of the Ring. The idea of the, that the Disconnect fans may have felt being similar to the Disconnect Star Wars fans felt when meeting Luke again in The Last Jedi, where they find him to be somewhat broken, made me reconsider the intention behind framing Luke this way. Specifically, how Episode 9 might present another version of Luke that reframes the Episode 8 character, and that thought gives me some hope for the next film. I thought Brad's comments were among the most thoughtful and insightful I've heard in the post-Last Jedi Maelstrom, and I want to know that I appreciate that. Anyway, I'd like to ask you chats for your thoughts on the following. I've heard the guys at Making Star Wars discussing the potential inclusion of the Lars homestead in Episode 9. There is talk that the homestead itself was shot on location in Jordan, and the igloo was on set in the UK. It looks like we're returning to Tatooine in the new film. How do you feel about this? How would you like to see Luke's childhood home included in Nine? And is this what J.J. Abrams meant when he said he'd be tying everything together with this final film? You guys continue to produce fascinating and entertaining Star Wars commentary, and the Talk Star Wars listener base is, as it has always been, the most positive and respectful group of Star Wars fans in the galaxy. Keep up the great work. May the Force be with you. Mark, the one what used to work here. (laughs) So that was from our... Supreme leader of old, Mark G. And uh, it was nice to hit that, you know, when this pops up in the inbox, I, I will admit that I, I sort of got a little bit of the heart kind of, you know, it grew three sizes that day. Oh. Yeah, it's a defect. I should probably get it checked out. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, 
it was really nice to see this. And yeah, I'm sure Brad will appreciate, um, you know, the kind of the kind words regarding his thoughts on on Bilbo in the on the Lord of the Rings and the kind of the the, the parallels, you know, that that draws with uh, Last Jedi and the sort of treatment of Luke. Tatooine in Episode Nine. Andy, how do you feel about that notion? Okay. Um, like I say, it's the rhyming stands of Star Wars, isn't it? There's mm-hmm. many reasons why they could go back to Tatooine, isn't there? I mean, you could go back to Tatooine because Ray wants to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray wants to go and find out about Luke, where he comes from, understands him a bit more. Okay. Um, you could even have maybe Kylo back going back to Tatooine to try and find out more Ooh. about where... Anakin come from where he started down the dark path yeah where he started down the dark path and then you know finding out about Luke going back to Luke's homestead you never know why they could go back there even Maz could be there for all you know yeah maybe in that's a, a really good point you know she could be sitting in Mos Eisley Cantina doing yeah. dodgy dealings because that's where she's ended up she there's a million it. and one reasons why you could go back to Tatooine it's a place yeah. where nobody wants to go you know yes yes if you're the bright center of the universe, you're on a planet that is farthest from. And if you yeah. want to be hiding, the resistance Ooh, yes. could be there yeah. <laughs> over on Tatooine. Yeah, that's there's you make some really good points there. You know, there's stuff like there's stuff you mentioned there that I hadn't even fathomed as being mm. plausible. You know, the idea of Maz Kanata, maybe she buys that cantina and mm. replaces uh, Takadana Castle with with that and the kind of interim. Um, maybe she ends up maybe, there through happenstance and she doesn't really, maybe she's not happy about it. Yeah. The other thing I, I think is maybe they could use it for a potential part of Lando okay. um, being in it. And he, you know, we know this message got sent out and nobody responded. Yes. Maybe he's too far away for that response in time. Maybe. But maybe he does get back to Leia and he's like, you know where to meet me or make okay. some sort of, you know, they want to be hidden. They don't want to meet up and it's the closest place he can get to yeah. without being noticed. And maybe, maybe it's that there's, there's a reason, there's a rhyme and reason for it all. Yeah. It's that rhyming stanza. They'll, they'll end up going back to Tatooine. Great. And it'll fit. And that's what JJ does well. And let's be honest until we all got told that's where we thought the false awaken was not Jacko. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> we, we all thought that was going to be where it would end so, up, you know, Sam yeah. planet. Um, yeah. until we've had further information on that. So, Well, indeed. you know, And I'm sure I would be very surprised if Tatooine was the only place in the galaxy with that style of architecture anyway. Mm. I'm sure there are other places where they use those same styles of domiciles, mm. potentially. Potentially. You know? yeah. I'll argue that. I, I mean, th- I think know, if- look, at, look at the world and how different the architecture is from town to country to continent. And True. you think universe-wise, you're flying six weeks in one direction to a different planet. True. Um, you never know. But yeah. it's, there is a million and one. It could be, couldn't it? It could just be totally. a, yeah. a flashback even. It could. Yeah, it could be, yeah. you know, it could be um, she, maybe she gets a, maybe she, she's got those Jedi texts, right, In last yeah. from Last Jedi. Maybe in there is a is kind of a Luke Skywalker journal or a diary or something. And We've you already of, had visions. Yeah. Why not? Why couldn't you have, you know, why couldn't you have her touch – something of luke's oh my um <laughs> and get a flashback to tatooine yeah you know and sort of see her see him using the force when he sort of first when it you know because this is more of a legends thing but they had i remember they had a, a thing in a book where he was talking about he was able to use the force unconsciously when he was a kid and, you know, his aunt Brew would ask where something was and he would just hold his hand out and tell her where it was and his uncle no. would get sort of upset and tell him off and stuff and he never understood why until later. Mm. So they could do, they could go along that, you know, on that line where he's sort of instinctively using the force as a young How, boy and sort of not really understanding what he's doing. Yeah. How about if it's like a vision from Ray? but a way to communicate with Luke. Like maybe she's trying to learn about him and that's how we get Mark Hamill in there yeah. is that she goes into this vision. She goes back to Tatooine and he turns up during the vision explaining mm. parts of the story. Oh, okay. You yeah. could even have that, you know, so she's trying to find out about Luke and she sees something and he's like, well, 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 that's not, you know, that's not this or that's not that, or this is where Anakin comes. You know, he could be sort of guiding her through that vision himself. Yeah back on Tatooine and it'd be a nice way of putting, putting Luke in there so mm-hmm. I mean we can hyperbolize all day about it but Tatooine totally. is cool with me man yeah you know, absolutely yeah. cool with me yeah I think um, 
it makes like I say I, it made a limited amount of sense before you mentioned all those really good points and now I can totally see it huh. you know like you say there's loads of different ways they can make that work huh. uh, and then do you think this is what JJ meant when he said he was tying everything together no I'm always going to stick with my belief of the return of the Jedi ending Okay, so like That's a celebration of, you know. I, yeah, I've got this feeling that this is going to be Kylo rising. I mean, my, my whole vision and what I would love to see from Episode Nine is Ray and the Resistance doing what they've got to do. We know there's this time jump now, apparently, of what, a year, isn't it? Year Something or two. Like yeah, maybe, year, year, one, or year two. maybe two, yeah. And I've got a feeling she's going to be pretty trained up in knowing what she's doing. Mm -hmm. The resistance is going to be a resistance now, and they're going to have all these people coming and helping them. And we are going to the grand battle, the the Star Wars at the end of Star Wars. You know, I mean, and I've got this feeling that the Knights of Ren are going to be a thing. Kylo is going to be a bigger force than someone to be reckoned with. Yeah. And it's going to get to that point where Luke will turn up, maybe Qui-Gon, maybe Obi-Wan, Yoda, and all of those Jedi, you know, I wouldn't even mind seeing Mace Window in there, um, Kit Fisto, you know, a lot of mm. Jedis from the past as Force Ghosts turning up because we know they're more corporeal now than they've ever been. Yes. With Yoda being able to knock Luke on the head, yeah. etc. Yeah, that's that, an odd one. That yeah, and I, never I really... think that was done on purpose. Mm-hmm. I think that was done to show the co- how corporeal they can be yeah. for the potential the re- the of this really final strong. battle. Yeah. And the original Return of the Jedi, wasn't it, was that all the Jedi were going to come yes. as false ghosts and, and and fight Vader. And I I really hope that's what we get here. Okay. I really hope that's how it ties it all together. You get the, the storylines being brought in, maybe some flashbacks, and they use Qui-Gon in there, or they use Obi-Wan in that mm-hmm. flashback to Tatooine, and you see Anakin being picked up as the young slave boy, and that all comes to a head at the end where those those Jedi turn up yeah. to have that final battle. Mm. Yeah, I, I can totally see where you're coming from. I think that say that makes a, a ton of sense. Like to happen, mm-hmm. and the the idea of I, I get the sense that the the fact that Yoda's so corporeal. I mean, the the, the lightning thing it raises a lot of questions. But the idea that he, you know he can be so corporeal that he can bonk Luke on the head and Luke can kind of feel it almost mm-hmm. speaks to Luke's strength in the Force because that's always like the the way it's kind of always struck me is it's a combination of the the abilities in the force of the person who's dead and also the power of the person who's mm. seeing it because you know ben starts off as a disembodied voice and then goes all the way to being able to sit down on things by jedi and yeah. over the course and of the trilogy that. and that's exactly a very good point with what we have with kylo right at the end holding the dice yeah exactly so, because that is a projection of luke's yes but kylo is still able to pick those up and hold them after luke has gone yes yes so, he's obviously you know He's holding on to that. Yeah. And, yeah. I think the, the more I sort of, you know, the more I kind of think about things like little bits and pieces like that, the the more I find it weird that people think of Ray as more powerful than Luke because Luke has just projected himself across the galaxy mm-hmm. and, as you say, projected objects that have corporeal, that have enough of a corporeal form to fool you into picking them up with a, yeah. with a proper method. I don't think he was ever fooled. I think Kylo knew at that point when he held them that they wasn't there. Yeah, I think, think I think you're right, yeah. Because yeah. obviously by that point he's already been, you yeah. know, he's already yeah. been dealing with, uh, you know, Luke kind of. I kind, uh, of, kind of think that was kind of a, like of a final middle finger from Luke to Kylo because totally. they were yeah. his dads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that was, that was kind of like, that's it, kid, you're done now. This yeah, is the it's, end. All, like, it's all designed no, to... There's get, no coming back from this. Yeah, it's all designed to get under his skin, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's all that. Yeah. That is that kind of um, approach. See you around, kid. Yeah, it's just that's all designed to really irk him and just kind of get him yeah. riled up and making mistakes and not thinking clearly and mm-hmm. sort of exploiting the fact that he's hot headed. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> totally, man. man. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah, indeed. So, um, yeah, Mark, that's that's our thoughts. What are you, you know? What are yours? Um, cause I don't think you mentioned them here. Uh, no, just, they heard about it. Don't um, ask him his thoughts. He had his chance. He <laughs> uh, used to host this. Yeah, All no, right. it's true. It's true. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so then the last question for this week is a doozy. I warn you now. It comes oh, from. I know it's from now. Yeah. yeah. It's from Kigo himself, Matt Keegan, author of the fantastic novel Hindsight, which also has some, you know, nostalgic t- ties to talk Star Wars being that, 
two, you know, the um, two of the people who contributed to the uh, novel used to be on this show way back when. But uh, Matt Keegan himself is an incredibly creative individual, and I will happily admit that when I first read this question when he would when he sent it over, I read it through and then just turned immediately and just thought out loud, "That is amazing." It's superb. You're going to get two bites of the cherry on this one. So, um, yeah, because obviously oh, you're going to be I, I doing it. I won't answer it. I'm on. All right, fair enough. One. If I've right, done you can, here, that's enough for me. You can recuse. That's fine. I'm not going to give Matt two lots of my time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt's question. Your podcast hosting skills get the attention of Lucasfilm Limited, and you land a dream role working at the headquarters in San Francisco. You're given an office overlooking the Yoda Fountain, a six-figure salary, and you'll get to work with some of the greatest creators on the planet. Then all hell breaks loose. Someone has unearthed a box of long lost and forgotten films. It's been discovered that some obscure director from the thirties made nine black and white films. And the title of these films are the same as the star Wars saga film titles. The family of the deceased director are threatening to sue over copyright breach for $1 trillion. Was it Dr. Evil, the lawyer? <laughs> uh, and Disney's lawyers realize that this will cripple the franchise. I think it'd probably take the company out. Mm. Um, The only way to save everything is to rename each episode. Your task on your first day, because you're the only one in the building that isn't panicking, is to rename the Star Wars films and keep the spirit, flavor, and adventure of the old titles. The retention of your cushy new dream job at Lucasfilm rests on your choices here and now. Don't let the fandom down. A couple of uh, caveats. The lawyers have informed you that the words Star and Wars were not used by the old director and can still be titled as such. Also, Bob Iger doesn't want them to be blandly titled Star Wars 1, Star Wars 2, so get creative. I think that was to catch Corey out of loopholing it from Tumbling Saber because that would be the kind of thing he might do if he was uh, struggling to come up with ideas. He might uh, loophole it to Mm -hmm. get out of having to engage the old grey matter. So I guess we just go through them, right? Right. It's the saga saga movies. So let's start with uh, episode one. So, current name, obviously, The Phantom Menace. We can't use it because there is an old 30s black and white film called The Phantom Menace. I could totally believe that, to be honest. I, but that's the kind of movie title that does sound like a 30s black and white movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I watched a movie last night. It wasn't from the 30s, um, but it was, you know, similarly garbage called <laughs> um, Frankenstein Meets the Space Monster. Oh, um, blind jeremy and i about that one probably what an absolute cracker of a film yeah. if you're sitting with your mates and want to rip the mickey out of something it is fantastic for that purpose it is just so rife with material it's not mm. even funny um but it was hilarious i say it's not funny it, it really 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 was so episode one you have to keep the tone and the spirit of the original while not calling it the phantom menace where do you go uh, oh, well, silly answers or creative answers? Because silly answers I can do. Quicker. We can do. We can do one um, of each if you want. <laughs> no, um, I don't know because I really like the Phantom Menace. It's probably one of my favourite titles for for the films. Actually, I know a lot of people think, yeah, that's fine. think otherwise with that, but I think it is definitely. Um, it's just a shame the Phantom Menace is only seen on screen for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, like Insurgents of the Force or something, you know, like okay. the inse- Inception of the Force or, mm. you know, Birth of the uh, the Chosen One. It Star Wars that, the One. That, that might work. The, the Chosen Star One. Star Wars the Chosen One. Because mm. that's, that's kind of the, you know, the, uh, the, the thing that the movie's built around. The premise of the movie is just... Yeah. It's just the Setting up introduction the one. of Anakin. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those, you can do the machete order and get rid of it because it doesn't make any difference because it's just a film about a young boy being saved. Yes. You, do, you can do that for exposition if yeah. you want and context. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, the chosen one or um, birth of the force or something along those lines. Yeah. I would go for. Okay. Um, yeah. I can't think of anything better than that. I think so far the chosen one is... Mm-hmm. The best I've got. Um, I 
attack of the clones. Attack. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to move on from this one. I can't, I've got nothing for the uh, for anything beyond the. Um, yeah. Episode two. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, really. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a 1950s diner in an American football game. We don't know what we're thinking. We apologise. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Episode two. Who is Cypher Diaz? <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be that would be <laughs> something I'd be interested. Is, is Where Cypher in the world Diaz? is Cypher Diaz? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. So trying to think it's tricky because you have to you have to think like get the films kind of tied around the the central theme now obviously the central theme in episode two is the sort of the budding romance between anakin and padme and but his sort of Mm. his first step on the dark path maybe the dark path the dark path because yeah i mean that's that's actually a great name for it because i i always find these three needed to be more bleak yeah. With their title names. I know you get to Revenge of the Sith. See, I always liked Rise of the Dark for number three. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's that I think it fits the tone of the film quite well. And it is his his rise to the dark side and this mm-hmm. this this beast, this monster. And it's like Revenge of the Sith, but the Sith isn't really a thing, is it? No, exactly. Point, yeah. And that's why I was always a bit like, okay. Um it was more of an ideology rather than an actual thing at that point it was just this yeah. this thing people had grasped onto um yeah. and yeah i mean rise of the dark i mean i do like the dark path that's great for number two mm-hmm. because i think maybe to change the tone of the film a little bit as well and yeah the way it was received because attack of the clones was a bit weird yeah it's, it's got, again it's got that sort of 50s b movie um yeah sort of feel to it you know mm. it's um it's one of those it's like it's it's on the nose for like I say like a fifty sixties kind of well there's that definite feel with number two of George Lucas's love for hot rods American diners that that nineteen fifties pop culture there's mm-hmm. a definite feel of that right through it what with Dex's diner yeah um what with even some of the Mon- some styles, of the droid chips and yeah the droids yeah. And, and even down to um, Camino like there's just this style to it that is very 1950s. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can see his love for it come through there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Dark Path, Rise of the Dark or, you know, something like that for three. Spark of the Dark. Yeah, Spark of the Dark. <laughs> Rainbow in the Dark. <laughs> Get Ronnie James Dio involved. Dark Clouds. Um, yeah. 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 Why does it always rain on me? Yeah. <laughs> Is it because I killed the women and children too? <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite scenes. Is that, the, is, that is good. Master Anakin, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That little Woo! twitch just fills me with so much joy. Yeah. It just um, the, 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 I can imagine, you know how. Half step back. Yeah. You know how in America, like, there's always these things that people say about how on opening night, like, the, um, you know, the sort of the crowd cheers and the crowd goes yeah. on like gasps and stuff. And you're just like, what world do you live in? I would have, having said that, I'd like to see in episode three, when he ignites the lightsaber and the you know, takes out the annoying kids, the whole theater, he's basically just like the biggest baby face in the entire tri- that <laughs> saga. He suddenly just becomes hero number one. It's like, I hate those kids. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, obviously, you know, obviously I don't mean that kids are kids of the future and all that. Hey, mate, um, I've got one. They're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's more yeah. complicated than that. There's still going to be yeah. people around who can you yeah. know, help them out. Um, Might as well lost calls. Right, yeah. so, let's, um, so, so we're starting with episode one, The Chosen One. Yep. Episode two, The Dark Path. Dark Path, love it. Episode three. So mm. we can't use Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, Rise of the Dark I like, but it's maybe a bit too like The Dark Path. Mm-hmm. Um, I got one. Yeah, Fall of the Republic. Fall of the Republic. Yeah, that's great. That, that's, that's Star Wars. That's no. basically what it's about, right? It's you know yeah. that's the whole movie. Is it all comes crashing down because all the sort of all the cards have been revealed, and, and that kind like, of works nicely with Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah. It's like you the know, Republic's that, down. Not that that's going to be a name in a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah, we well, can enjoy it while it lasts for the next few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we got so we got our episode three. That was nice and easy. Mm-hmm. A New Hope. 
light rises. Okay. Um, with darkness to meet you. Um, okay. Mm. Force awakens. <laughs> we can't use that. <laughs> it doesn't mean like you can't just rename episode seven and go, yeah, I'll put that on episode four. It'd be fine. Force awakens for four and new hope for seven. There you go. <laughs> I've renamed them. Uh, um, let's see. Force Revenge of the Jedi. Revenge of the Jedi. Rise of the Jedi. Hmm. Episode four. The Adventures of Luke Skywalker. Farm boy. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I animal feel like killer. a spark of hope. Spark of hope. Oh. Might be. Well, the thing is, I wonder if that might be the title of episode nine. No. No? Okay. No. Right. I'm going to go with that for my episode four then. Mm. Okay. I like it. Spark of hope. Yeah. Because yeah. then if you rename Rogue One, you just call it Built on Hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And fire, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back is kind of <sighs> dark legacy. Oh, mm. that's a good one. Kind of, yeah. Because the thing is, obviously, the original trilogy is not written with the hindsight of you know I'm going to go definitely going to go back and make these films one day. So they're all kind of themed on the circumstance. Mm. Whereas I think if you're going to reorient the saga, you do it from start to finish by reframing it around Anakin. Yeah. 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 Because well, it's his story, isn't it? Regardless of. Yeah. Well, this is it. You know, how you tell a story, it's all Anakin. Regardless of who the protagonist is, the first trilogy is about his fall, the second yeah. is about his rise, and then rise. the third is about his legacy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I like that one. So Dark yeah, Legacy. Dark Legacy. Wouldn't um, that work better for, for eight, though? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. It's tricky. That's a tricky one. Um, the Edge of Darkness. The Edge of Darkness, nice. For Luke. Yeah. it works with both of them. It does work well, yeah. Let's go with that, yeah. Edge of Dark- Actually, if it's a title thing, isn't Edge of Darkness a Mel Gibson movie? Is it really? Yeah. So maybe we could. Maybe <laughs> um, I don't know. He, he, you know what? I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna make a, a house rule on this one because he didn't specify that we can't give it the same title as another film. Okay, wicked. Yeah. Episode A: Lethal Weapon <laughs> Three. <laughs> Die Hard with a Vengeance. There you Ma- go. That's a good one. Die Ma- Hard with a Vengeance. Maverick. The <laughs> six. Um, no. Goonies 2. Um, Return of the Jedi. Fall of the Empire. Victory of the Light. Uh, Fall of the Empire. Fall of the Empire. As obviously, like you say, it, it just sums that story up, doesn't it? Which is what they kind of do. Yeah. Um, hmm. Episode six: Kick Ass Teddy's from Endor. <laughs> Kick Ass Teddy's from Endor. If we're talking about um, you know fifties and sixties B movie sounding titles, Kick Ass yeah. Kick Ass Space Teddy's is like right there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, episode six: Why is the Yub Nub song like that? Um, <laughs> Do you know what? I can accept for all the changes in six. I can, I, I'll even deal with the music. Mm. I don't like it, but I can deal with it. But that really bothers me. That's the Yubnub song not being in it. It's, I like the new one, but I do, obviously my, you know, my, uh, my history is kind of growing up with the Yubnub song. They could have had both. They you could, could have had both, on yeah. that planet. They're not, they haven't got an orchestra there, so I don't know where this music's coming from that they're playing on all those stormtroopers' heads, mm. right? They're, they're just going tangent here. But <laughs> they, they, 
where is that coming from? Yub Nub song, then cut into victory celebrations around the around the the, the galaxy with yeah. the other music. That's fine, but mm. no. Um, yeah, six. R- rise of yeah. So six. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Fall of the Empire for mine. Fall of the Empire. Yeah. Uh, it just yeah. Um, rise of the Rebellion. Rise of the Rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. works. One of them too. I'll yeah. go with yours. That's cool. Okay. Uh, Episode seven. See, a new hope really works. Um, yeah. Where in the world is Luke Skywalker? <laughs> Where in the galaxy is Luke Skywalker? Sorry, I should say. It'll be on the fridge. If you lose something, it's usually be on the fridge. Um, <laughs> the force is in the last place you looked. <laughs> Why did nobody look behind the fridge for Luke? So that's there a great he is. question. Oh, it's out of back. Oh, I might have to um, do that. I might have to do that for the remote control. Quick aside, we've lost our remote control at home. Really no, annoying. Downloading an app to try and work it off my phone. I've um, got, yeah, I've done it. That's what I've ended right. up doing as a workaround. Yeah, but it's, really, it's driving me out the wall. You know what you want to do? You want to stand outside and change the channels when Jen's not doesn't know you there. That I can't even make it. I can't even make it reliably work when I'm pointing the bloody phone. All oh, right. Okay. Fair I can't right. take any chances. Um, Episode seven. The Force Awakens. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of one of those that's perfectly fits. Yeah, it's the trouble, isn't it? It's a yeah. difficult one. And yeah, I know he knows this is difficult. This is why he's. Oh so, yeah. He's so. This is why he's no so prior, adept. Prior knowledge of this because I didn't yeah. look in the Twitter group at the question yeah. whenever he sent in. Um. Maybe yeah. something along the lines because uh, we didn't we didn't really know about. That's uh, a hard one, mate. I, I'm blanking on this. Completely. Yeah, it's really this was the really Force tricky. Awakens. I mean, it's about the Force reawakening after Lord knows how many years of it being quite quiet. Call of the Force. Yeah. Call of the Wheels. Um, Call of the Wheels. Mm. I really hope they reintroduce some of that now. It would be nice, but I, I wonder if the problem is that it's so late in the day for them to introduce new concepts. We've got a whole God knows how many years of Star Wars coming, mate. And this exactly, is, yeah. So they can, know, do, they can do that stuff. I just you know. think it brings that mythology to Star Wars that we're kind of missing a little bit, bit that's all. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always wanted to see that scene of Luke building his lightsaber and things like that. And I hope we start to get some of that in here, even through other storytelling. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Call of the Force, that kind of works. I like that. Mm. You know? Yeah. Got the force in it, unfortunately. But um, yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I don't think we have to completely well, get rid of the force as a concept. So I hope not. Well, from that. It's a character. It's not even a concept at this point. Now, is it? It's one of the main yeah. jumping balls for the last for the last two films. Is yeah. the force? I mean, it was always a sideline. Even in New Hope, he was teaching him about the force. But yeah. there was that main storyline of I've got to beat my dad, mm-hmm. or a guy that I didn't know was my dad at the time. I've just got to take down this big scary dude. Yeah. And you know, the last two films have been about reconnecting that mm. um re, you know reestablishing that connection with the force between people and this this you know sentient beings and this 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 mystical force that binds everything and it's been about reconnecting that because it's been lost and yeah. the force is fighting back for that and wants wants this because it needs it for some reason and um i see it more as an entity and, a, and as, a, as a being yeah. rather than a just a thing and yeah, so it does need to be there in the title, but yeah, I like that one. Yeah. 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 Um, Last Jedi. Uh, this one's another one that's hard. Yeah, because I mean, there's... Rise of, the, Rise of the First Order, maybe? I think it's more of a... The film is more of a... Do the, the battle of balance of power isn't it but i don't want to use balance of power because it's not it's about kylo just wanting to eradicate it all and start again yeah and luke essentially wanting to do the same thing mm-hmm. and raise in the middle going no nah, um there should be good guys and there should be bad guys and that's yeah. how it should work yeah um and the both of them are just pretty much wanted to end and mm-hmm. 
I mean, Kylo's not wrong in what he says. You know, he's like, join me and we can start doing it differently. Doing, doing it differently. Not, yeah. in, not, you know, not completely my way, which is, is bad and not completely your way, which is, you know, too good. It's we yeah. can meet in the middle and do what we have to do. And if people have to get killed in the process, mm-hmm. they get killed. Um, yes. but if we want to save some people in the process, then wicked. Cause essentially Kylo down deep down the side, he's got some great parents and a great uncle is his nature versus nurture argument. That one, isn't it? Of like, he's, he's got that dark side in him, but he knows good. He's seen good. And he's, yeah. he's been, he's been raised like that. And mm. he's been taught, just as well from you know from Luke yeah. all that time in the temple so it's mm, balance of balance of power probably works in a way um, mm, yeah or balance of the force but then I don't like overusing the same words because that's why I don't think the force will be in episode nine's title at all yeah um, but balance of power maybe or mm-hmm. What you got? I don't know. I think it's a sort of, you know, um, rise of the fir- rise of the first order or the first order, ri- you know, first order rises or something like that. Mm-hmm. Just kind of along those lines to to kind of make it clear that like the the tide is turning and it's not like a it's not a cheerful film in that respect. You know? Yeah, fall of the resistance or something. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. You know, um, but I, that's the best I've got. No, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. So, Matt did clarify in the Twitter group that in order to complete this, you have to name episode nine. Now, obviously, you don't have to do it in a way that doesn't clash with the name that hasn't yet has yet to be revealed. So, rest easy on that respect. I What's think this about I hear T R A V. T- no, the T R A V thing I think was a bit of a red herring. Um, oh, okay. Turns out there was something to do with the book. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, That's good. I don't know. Um, I su- we suggested try Ray as villain. <laughs> <laughs> that worked for me. You know, I think that'd be interesting. Be an interesting, yeah. it'd be a bold way to end a trilogy. If you have a twist. Yeah, and she I sat there it. with those letters trying to work out a million and one things, yeah. including victory and stuff. And it just, nothing sort of rung true. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. there's probably a combination I haven't thought of that goes, wow, that's actually amazing. But um, yeah, I sat there for ages. I drive for a living. I've got nothing but time but to yes. think. Um, yes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I do like the balance of the false mm-hmm. because I think it will bring it to a full circle. I also like a last hope. A last hope. Oh, that's yeah. good. Because I think that brings it. I mean, if we're going to forgive the, you know, kind of discount the, mm-hmm. the prequels here, you know, you start with a new hope. And yeah. we we had there isn't there is our last hope. No, there is another. Yeah. And I think I like that would be the last hope is Ray to bring that balance to the false. The last hope. That's really I, I like that a lot, actually. That's very evocative. And yeah, thanks. And I, I just think it's one of those as well. We've had the false awake sorry, the last Jedi, Return of the Jedi. We can use those same beats again mm-hmm. um, and those same words again in the title. And I think yeah, a new hope and a last hope would round that off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with what I keep thinking is being teased by the music and the fact that a particular piece turns up in both Force Awakens and Last Jedi, March of the Resistance. Oh, okay. That's, that's my... That's... Pick. It's going to end... This film's going to end on a... It's going to be a battle. It's going to yes. be a big, um, you know, Re- Return of the King epic. Yeah battle that's how you you know a film is called star wars that's it's, it's about war and and fighting and and control and it's got to end on that and yeah that that's that brings in that sort of grandeur to it march mm. you know um yeah i like it mate yeah nice um the, he didn't mention the standalone so we don't have to do those but if you were to do them what might they be um, I feel Solo like this is Han Solo. Yep, that works. <laughs> yeah, Han Solo. Han, Han Solo. Han, yeah, Han, Han. I think that's fair. Han or Han Solo. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd, the Adventures of Han Solo. I mean, why not? Something like that. It, yeah. You know, Mark Mark used to say all the time, didn't he? At Star's End, wasn't it? I think he used to go mm-hmm. on about the, the and something like that. Give it a grand yeah. name. That that's cool. It didn't. Solo was one of those pleasant. 
pleasantly refreshing Star Wars movie that I could watch, enjoy, and I didn't have to think any more of it. Yeah. And that's not a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It was just did exactly what it needed to. I went and watched the Star Wars movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. It's nowhere near the best, but it's nowhere near the worst. Yeah. It sits there nicely in the middle going, that was great. Um, in fact, I've left gripes with that movie than I do The Last Jedi. Oh, the only good. thing yeah. I really didn't like was Mother Proxima. To yeah. Be fair. It, yeah, I think it was one of those things where it was kind of just there because no, you needed to establish it. Because she early. spoke English. That oh, is what I okay. about. What is this new thing with Star Wars where nothing's subtitled or even you don't need subtitles. We never had subtitles with Jabba the Hutt originally. We just got it through content, what, what C-3PO was translating. Yeah. And what is this, you know, Uncar Plot spoke galactic basic mm-hmm. mother proxima speaks galactic base what why is everything suddenly and you know oh and harm suddenly can speak um bouquets like it doesn't it you know they're scraping me a little bit that bit but if it, yeah. yeah han solo stars in something like that mm-hmm. rogue one i yeah i mean you could give it kind of a spy thriller kind of name if you wanted to just something quite flashy and yeah you could yeah you know, um, but it's kind of got that with Rogue One. It's kind of like Rogue Nation, isn't it? <laughs> the, the yeah, the Mission Impossible movie. There's there's a we don't need much on that one. Um, yeah, yeah. I, to be honest, I would kind of just refrain from renaming Rogue One because I think Rogue One's pretty perfect. Rogue Two. You could have chosen any number. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Rogue Rogue Squadron. There you go. Really. Uh, we have your dry. call sign. Um, no, we're nicking the ship. Yeah. Star Wars. We're nicking the ship. Thieving gifts. Brilliant. Yeah, thieving gifts. The uh, a Star Wars story. Star Ben Mendelsohn rules a Star Wars story. There you go. No argument. Mm. You're never going to hear an argument about that one from me. <laughs> Love a bit of Mendelsohn. Did you know that Tarkin's in this a Star Wars story? <laughs> <laughs> Guy Henry plays all of them a Star Wars story. <laughs> Real. Yeah. There you go, Matt. So uh, hopefully those answers have met with your approval. And uh, if not, then uh, suck it up, by the cup. We did our best. Uh, but yeah. the, listeners, we are at the end of the questions for this week's Talk Star Wars. Once again, it's been a bit of a slow news week on the Star Wars front. So... There's nothing really in the way of, you know, there's not been any that I've seen. There's no been no books, no, you know, certainly no teaser, no name. It's been a bit about the theme park this week, hasn't there? A little bit about the theme park, yeah, but it's all... Costumes. And- it's all costumes and there's a lot of, apparently there's a lot of uh, written stuff coming from people who've been there and actually been around it, but they can't take some of the pictures and stuff no, like that. No, it's just people that are viewing it. Um, yeah. I know that the one thing that sparked my interest was they're talking about a lot of the food and drinks that will be available there. And I noticed it in the show notes from Vesuvi, mm. um, talking about the drinks that, and the food that was mentioned in the series. I wonder if that's there's a reason for that. Yeah. If that's going to be tied into this, this Galaxy's Edge, some of those things are going to be available. Yeah. If they yeah. keep mentioning it. It's one yeah. of those, like you say, keep doing it, keep doing it, and then when kids turn up, they go, "I know that." Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. It's you know, it's a, it's like muscle memory, isn't it? Yeah, in that respect. Well, there you go, Andy. Thank you very much for joining me this week. My uh, pleasure, you, mate. Thank you. Know, you. You've uh, done me a great service, and obviously, I'm sure the listeners will be very happy to hear you again. That's um, right. Save me putting my daughter to bed. That's well, fine. indeed. You know, and um, I'm going to give you the floor now to obviously give a shout out to your own wonderful endeavour. So the floor is yours. Well, you can find me at Retro Inc. Podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, all of them. I think if we're not on there, let me know and I will change that. Um, you can find us at the Star Wars Commonwealth. We are part of that lovely group of people that I'm sure Rob will go into detail soon. Oh, yes. And um, you can find us at retropodcast.co.uk. You can email us at contact at Retro Inc. Podcast. Come out and listen to our show. It's all about nostalgia and the retrospective of looking back at old films, at geek culture, at pop culture, at music, TV, film, movies, everything you can think of, toys when we were growing up, memories of growing up. And all the way out to modern day where we actually show our, you know, we give our our retrospective and our views on modern films as well. Mm. So it covers everything. And yeah. we're just three lonely nerds that like to jabber. Um, yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, you know, I've listened to many an episode with and been filled with that same kind of 
warmth and nostalgia that you know Maybe. that that uh that it's designed to evoke so clearly you're very effective at doing that thank you yeah, yeah. Um, you try. so if you've enjoyed talk star wars and you wish to subscribe to our newsletter in podcast form um that got away from me a bit never mind uh talk star wars is available on all good podcast platforms and some of the rubbish ones like apple uh i kid i kid <laughs> you know itunes is is fine uh but you it's can there. You, yeah, totally. It's certainly a thing you can use. But we're on all the good podcasting platforms. If you wish to participate you in the show... You can use cyanide as well, just saying. It's maybe just not a good idea. Not so fine, yeah. <laughs> not endorsed or in any way by Talk Star Wars or Emotionally 14. No. Um, or indeed, is retro ink. most people, you know. Right. Um, available on all good podcast platforms. If you want to get involved in the conversation and send in your own questions, then you can email podcast at emotionally14.com with the subject line Talk Star Wars. And uh, it will make its way into the notes for the following week. Uh, you know, unless you get it in on late on a Thursday, in which case it will be in the following week after that. So, you know, you, you, the generally, you can only record, like, if you keep waiting for the next one to come in, you never get a recording in. And believe me, I speak from bitter experience when I say that. Um, if you wish to follow the show on social media, there are accounts at Talk Star Wars on Twitter and Instagram. There's a Facebook group, a Facebook page. All that good stuff. Uh, and Emotionally 14, the the place that makes Talk Star Wars happen now and has done for some time, is uh, available on Twitter and Instagram at Emotionally 14. Website Emotionally14.com. And you can also get the podcast on YouTube through the Emotionally 14 YouTube channel. So, Andy, do you have a social media all your own? Or do you kind of – is the best way to f- sort of get to you through Retro Inc.? If you'll make – that didn't mean to come off so threatening. <laughs> uh, no, I'm um... – I do have my own Instagram, which I take um, artsy nature photos on, which is the Lone Hobbit Adventures. If Lovely. you want to follow me on there, but otherwise, yeah, it's all it's all. Um, my Facebook is literally set to private and everything. So if you want to contact me through that, through um, don't. <laughs> yeah, well, you can do it through Retro Inc. and I'm there, there and I'll happily talk to you. But um, it's a lovely group in there as well. Some, no, I mean, to be honest, if you listen to this show, you'll hear names and you'll see them in there. Matthew Gilbert is in there, indeed. And, yes, you know, so a lot, a lot of the listeners from here are also in there, and that's the beauty of the Commonwealth. Yes, yes, indeed, um, it is. Um, so yeah, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Rob Wade Vision, and as I mentioned, I'm the face behind the space at Emotionally 14 and that Talk Star Wars. So if you interact with either of those accounts, you're probably going to be talking to me. If you uh, don't, I say, you're silly because I know, right? I know. <laughs> Honestly, E14 is amazing, mate. Isn't I it love it. So yeah, much good stuff. Cast, yeah, it's, it's so much good stuff. There's the game cast. There's a the crazy train podcast. There's talk Star Wars. There's Fire When Ready on YouTube. There's HeroClix UK. Occasionally, there's the E14 Toy Box. Uh, there you go. There's so much stuff. It's just so much. And then there's written reviews, and there's all sorts of good stuff. It, it cannot How be. How do you get time to work, mate? I do not sleep, and booze helps. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. kid, I kid. Uh, it doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes you not care. Exactly, much. yeah. Yeah. Um, so, as we kind of touched on a minute ago, uh, Talk Star Wars is a production of Emotion New 14, but Talk Star Wars is also a proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network, of which Retro Inc. is also a member. So, there are nine current members of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network, each producing at least a show maybe two, maybe three. If you're Kyle, again, you just never stop. You never sleep. I don't know how he does it. Um, But these are the outlets that are part of this wonderful network of ours. Talk Star Wars, The Tumbling Saber, Generation X-Wing, The Nerd Room, The Rogue Squadron Podcast, The San Diego Sabres Radio Podcast, The Tatooine Sons Podcast, Retro Inc. Podcast. That's a good one, that one. Yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, And The Sandcrawler Cast. And as a, on a personal note, um, no doubt Commonwealth listeners and followers will have know, will have seen this, but want to extend a hearty congratulations to Rob Williams of the Generation yes. X Wing podcast for this week, officially becoming a member of the 501st. That's a big feat, mate. That That's is good. no mean feat. It really is impressive. And uh, it is amazing, his armor. Yes, it really is great. I saw it and I was just like, yes, I totally see why he got in. There's mm-hmm. no no questions asked on that one for me. That was fantastic. If he said to me he bought that as a yeah, you know, totally. a film replica, yes. um, I, I yeah, totally, totally buy believe it. it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's insane how good it is. Mm-hmm. He's done an amazing job. And Rob... If you're listening, and I hope you are, yeah. I cannot congratulate you enough. 
it's just brilliant. Well done, mm-hmm. sir. Uh, and we're all obviously thrilled for you. And, you know, we look forward to seeing posts about the 501st and seeing you out and about in your fantastic Scout Trooper armor in the not too distant future. So well done again, sir. And it is the best Stormtrooper of them all. It is. The, the Scout Trooper is yeah. a superb trooper. There is no doubt there. So that's it for another week. Talk Star Wars. The Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Find us on the web at StarWarsCommonwealth.com and take your first steps into a larger world. And once again, thank you very much for listening to Talk Star Wars Episode 158. We will see you next week for Episode 159. And in the meantime, may the Force be with you. <laughs>